I would always rather be happy than dignified. I care for myself. The more solitary, the more friendless, the more unsustained I am, the more I will respect myself. I am no bird, and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will. Life appears to me too short to be spent in nursing animosity, or registering wrongs. The trouble is not that I am single and likely to stay single, but that I am lonely and likely to stay lonely. If all the world hated you and believed you wicked, while your own conscience approved of you and absolved you from guilt, you would not be without friends. Happiness quite unshared can scarcely be called happiness. It has no taste. I can live alone, if self-respect and circumstances require me so to do. I need not sell my soul to buy bliss. I have an inward treasure born with me which can keep me alive if all extraneous delights should be withheld, or offered only at a price I cannot afford to give. Prejudices, it is well known, are most difficult to eradicate from the heart whose soil has never been loosened or fertilized by education. They grow there firm as weeds among stones. Flirting is a woman's trade, one must keep in practice. All my heart is yours, sir, it belongs to you, and with you it would remain, were fate to exile the rest of me from your presence forever. The soul, fortunately, has an interpreter, often an unconscious but still a faithful interpreter, in the eye. I ask you to pass through life at my side, to be my second self and best earthly companion. I have little left in myself, I must have you. The world may laugh, may call me absurd, selfish, but it does not signify. My very soul demands you, it will be satisfied, or it will take deadly vengeance on its frame. But life is a battle, may we all be enabled to fight it well. There is no happiness like that of being loved by your fellow creatures and feeling that your presence is an addition to their comfort. We know that God is everywhere, but certainly, we feel his presence most when his works are on the grandest scale spread before us, and it is in the unclouded night sky, where his worlds will their silent course that we read clearest his infinitude, his omnipotence, his omnipresence. It does good to no woman to be flattered by a man who does not intend to marry her, and it is madness in all women to let a secret love kindle within them, which, if unreturned and unknown, must devour the life that feeds it, and, if discovered and responded to, must lead, ignis fatuous like, into miry wilds whence there is no extrication. Laws and principles are not for the times when there is no temptation, they are for such moments as this, 
when body and soul rise in mutiny against their rigor. If at my convenience I might break them, what would be their worth? The human heart has hidden treasures, in secret kept, in silence sealed. The thoughts, the hopes, the dreams, the pleasures, whose charms were broken if revealed. Yet it would be your duty to bear it, if you could not avoid it. It is weak and silly to say you cannot bear what it is your fate to be required to bear. If men could see us as we really are, they would be a little amazed. But the cleverest, the acutest men are often under an illusion about women. They do not read them in a true light. They misapprehend them, both for good and evil. Their good woman is a queer thing, half doll, half angel. Their bad woman almost always a fiend. I remembered that the real world was wide, and that a varied field of hopes and fears, of sensations and excitements, awaited those who had the courage to go forth into its expanse, to seek real knowledge of life amidst its perils. Conventionality is not morality. Self-righteousness is not religion. To attack the first is not to assail the last. Conventionality is not morality. I try to avoid looking forward or backward, and try to keep looking upward. It is in vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility, they must have action, and they will make it if they cannot find it. It is not violence that best overcomes hate, nor vengeance that most certainly heals injury. I am not deceitful. If I were, I should say I loved you, but I declare I do not love you. I dislike you the worst of anybody in the world. I could not unlove him now, merely because I found that he had ceased to notice me. I believe in some blending of hope and sunshine sweetening the worst lots. I believe that this life is not all, neither the beginning nor the end. I believe while I tremble, I trust while I weep. It is a pity that doing one's best does not always answer. Crying does not indicate that you are weak. Since birth, it has always been a sign that you are alive. Life is so constructed that the event does not, cannot, will not, match the expectation. I could not help it. The restlessness was in my nature. It agitated me to pain sometimes. I loved him very much, more than I could trust myself to say more than words had power to express. Friendship, however, is a plant which cannot be forced. True friendship is no gourd spring up in a night and withering in a day. A beauty neither of fine color nor long eyelash, nor penciled brow, but of meaning, of movement of radiance. Silence is of different kinds, and breathes different meanings. 
Friends always forget those whom fortune forsakes. A ruffled mind makes a restless pillow. A man only proposes when he is afraid of losing a woman.